Last year, my, uh, my friend and former law partner at McGinnis Cooper, George Cooper, was a recipient of this award. So I watched his thank you on YouTube to get a feel for what I might say tonight. Over the years, I would say I've watched and listened to George give well over 100 speeches. So George is very witty. He's a superior speaker. And he always starts by taking this black leather date book out of his uh, breast pocket, quite a bit smaller than this one. Um, and so, you know, his, his little date book, it's filled with very important things, scraps of paper and business cards and all kinds of little things, including, including the two or three key words that he needed to sort of kick off a Churchillian or Kennedy-esque set of remarks. He was always brilliant. So watching George on YouTube reminded me of other uh, law partners at the firm, and I'm thinking in particular of, of the late Stuart McGuinness and Bowtie Joe McDonald. And so over the years, all three of those gentlemen became mentors and friends to an impressionable young female lawyer from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And all three of those men played a part in building Canada and Nova Scotia. So landslide George Cooper, as, as an advisor, as a man of ideas, as a great communicator, Stuart, as instrumental to the building of the Confederation Bridge and NAFTA, and Joe, of course, conciliare, confidant, uh, council and one of the brains behind the privatization of Nova Scotia power. Now the common thread is the ability to impact. Some would call that power. And I learned from these three masters and over the years from so many, many more, including Frank, who's of course on the name of, of this award. Women generally are uncomfortable with the idea of power. Uh, we like to collaborate, we like to partner, we like to team build, and we are very, very good at it. But I have learned that to get a few things done, it is essential to, to understand power, to get comfortable with it, and most especially, how to use power. The irony is, when I sought feedback for these remarks tonight, it was suggested that I should find another word for power. Karen, that's kind of a strong word for you. <laughs> so I couldn't help but wonder whether the same suggestion would have been, the same feedback would have been given to Frank or George or Stuart or Joe. For over 20 years, I've held positions in which I've had the ability to impact policy. Positions in which I could make things happen, and I did. But always to build and create a better Nova Scotia and a better Canada. In my own day job, I try very, very hard not to use the power of the president, uh, unless I really have to, and that is rare. Usually to resolve a conflict or to set a direction which is strategically important. Let's face it, getting things done is hard. Making good and effective policy is hard. Creating the conditions for success, it's hard. You have to consult with a wide range of people, some of whom are not rowing in the same direction. And sometimes you even come across people deliberately rowing in the wrong direction. Seriously. It can happen in any medium or large organization self-interest ahead of the greater good. Or sometimes, a tiny little bit of misalignment. One of those, is it me or is it them moments. It happens. I'm kidding, but only sort of. Getting consensus to develop good and effective policy is not easy. It requires working with right-minded people who are focused on the same goal. And once you have the team and the goal, 
then you can work together to build the path that will get you there. If they believe strongly in the goal, then great people, great people can overcome bad process. And I've seen that time and time again, <clears throat> excuse me, in dealing with the complexities of three levels of government, dozens of stakeholders, and multiple interested parties. So while great people can overcome bad process, the reverse is not true. Great process does not overcome the wrong people. It is all about the people, then, now, tomorrow, always. Thank you very much for this special recognition. The Port of Halifax today is as busy as it's ever been, and we are just on the verge of another significant jump up in cargo. We are agonizingly close to a solution that will get most of the port-related trucks out of the downtown core in Halifax. And we, yeah, I, 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 I like it too. I said agonizingly close. And we are exploring options for a new cruise berth. The common thread is the word we. I'm fortunate to be part of a great team. They are smart, independent individuals across many organizations. I'm thinking of the city, I'm thinking of the province. I can look around this room and I can, I can point to so many people who have helped because we've been focused on the same goal and we are collectively putting the greater good ahead of self-interest. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how power can be powerful. Thank you.